Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture, we will learn about Amazon SageMaker Autopilot. And you guys will be, I would say, amazed with Autopilot because essentially you don't need to know any machine learning, you don't need to know any coding. You just, what you need to do is to just upload the data and that's it. And what uh, SageMaker will do, it will essentially create many experiments so we'll try multiple models, we'll try all the feature engineering uh, pro processes, we'll, we'll, we'll do it, we'll do all the data cleaning for you, we'll, do, we'll deal with all the null elements or missing elements. You essentially don't need, you just, you just show up, that's all what you need with the data, okay? That's all what you need. All right, so let's go ahead and basically repeat what we have done in the previous uh, series of lectures to try to show you how to use Autopilot to do that trick for us. Okay. So if you guys can see here, here I have my AI in business final. That's essentially the, um, uh, the code that I had before. This is simply what we covered in the previous uh, 10 lectures or so. And now I have another Jupyter notebook, and that's what we call it AI in business autopilot. And if you guys can see here, I only have two tasks, task one and task two. That's all the coding that you need. And it's actually pretty much standard in a way. So first, we are going to import pandas, import NumPy, and then here I have my data, which is credit card data. So if you guys press shift enter, here we go. So all what you need to do is to upload your CSV data, which is UCI credit card uh, dot CSV. You are just upload the data. I check out the data right now by checking out credit card DF head. And if you go to the right, all what I need from here is this one. That's all what I need. Okay. So all, all what I need is the name of my target uh, label or my target uh, column. This is simply the, mar the column that I'm trying to predict. So I just, all what I need is just the name, what it's, what it's called, because I need to feed that when I start to kick off my experiments, okay? All right, so now we're good. So that's all what I need. The next step is I just need to upload my data to S3. So I'm going to import SageMaker. We're going to create a session. So we're gonna say SageMaker.session, that'll be my SES here. And then I'm going to specify my prefix. I'm gonna create SageMaker autopilot and then input and then I need to upload my data to s3 that's all what it is so I'm gonna say please go ahead upload my CSV file that I have in here and please use the prefix which is a prefix that I have in here and that will be my URI and you'll be able to if you run it shift enter it the data will be uploaded and here is the um, location of my data in s3 so I need to specify this and I also need to specify the output location that's all what I need so here I'm saying, okay, please go ahead, go to S3, go to my SageMaker US East 1, that's my, um, my region. And then here I'm using the exact same number that I have in here. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that. And then I'm going to specify SageMaker, Autopilot and the output. And that's essentially where we will store the model outputs. That will be the model artifacts will be stored in here. Again, shift enter, looks good, and that's it. That's all what you need when it comes to the coding part. Let's go ahead and start to create our experiments. Okay, so if you guys see here on the left-hand side, you will find that there is SageMaker experiment list. Okay, so if you just got, click on the icon here, I can go ahead and click create experiment. And you can simply go here and uh, provide an experiment name. So for example, I can say AI in business, okay? And I can maybe say autopilot, autopilot, and maybe I'm gonna call it, let's say one, for example, because I already have an AI in business autopilot already, uh, I ran it before. So with here, I just specify the experiment name. And then here, I need to specify two things. First, I need to specify the S3 bucket location, and that's where my data is stored. So that's when you need to go back to the, um, the uh, notebook you need to select here the location of your S3 data. So you're gonna go here, you can copy that, copy cells. Actually, I can just say copy, control C, go back to my create experiment and paste it here. Okay, all right. The next step is I need to specify the output data location. That's where my model artifacts will be uploaded to. So I can select enter S3 bucket location. You can go back, here is my location. So I'm just gonna copy that go back here to my experiment, paste it. Okay, looks great. 
And now I need to specify, okay, what is the machine learning problem that I'm trying to solve? Is it binary classification problem? Or maybe it's a regression problem? Or maybe it's a multi-class classification problem? Or maybe I'm just, maybe, I don't know, like too lazy, or maybe I'm just, I didn't know, so I just can select auto, and then the, the SageMaker Studio on its own will be able to actually kind of, you know, like predict the type of problem, uh, problem statement. But what we're doing here is we're essentially doing binary classification. You can select the objective, either F1 or maybe the accuracy, maybe select accuracy, for example. And it's asking you, do you want to complete or run a complete experiment or not? You can say yes or no. I'm just going to say yes. And that's it. That's all what you need, which is, again, pretty incredible. All what you need in just one page to create an experiment name, provide the S3 bucket location, provide the output location, specify the type of problem. So that's essentially what you need. Only one information that is still missing, which is what we have in here, is the target attribute name. That's essentially what you need, which is essentially what is the name of the column that you're trying to predict. So if you guys go back, if you guys remember, we loaded our data in here, and that's essentially what I'm looking for. This is the name of the target column. If you guys go back, I can just paste it here, and that's it. So now I have, again, to, to uh, summarize, you provide the experiment name, you provide the S3 bucket location for my data, you provide what is the name of the column that you're trying to predict, which is what I have here, you specify the output location, of the model artifacts, you specify the type of machine learning problem, and here we go. You go ahead, you select create experiment, and that's it. You just let it run maybe for an hour or so, and what's gonna happen in the background is that the, the uh, autopilot will gonna start first by analyzing the data, by performing feature engineering, by basically like filling in null element, uh, missing values, we're doing all the um, uh, feature engineering procedures, and then we're gonna train multiple models. So we're gonna tra train maybe an XGB, XGBoost model, maybe train a couple of other models, and then we're gonna tune these models as well, and then we'll tell you, you know what, here we go, here is my, all the models that I trained, and here is the best model as well that I used, which is again, pretty incredible, all right? Okay, so uh, please note that I already have an experiment that I ran before, because again, this process takes a very long time. So if you actually go back, okay, here I have another experiment, which is AI in Business Autopilot. That's essentially the experiment that we created. It's called uh, AI in Business Autopilot 1, but that's essentially what I have been running for a while. So I let it run for, uh, I would say, around an, uh, 49 minutes, as you guys can see here, probably, approximately. And this is essentially what happened. Here, as you guys can see, I have a ton of uh, models that has been trained, okay? And here I have all the objective for it. So I can just go here and maybe sort that by the objective. If you sort it, it will tell you here is the best model. So again, after all the different models, here is the best. Just don't worry about it. If you click on it and you can just say deploy model. Again, pretty amazing. You can say deploy model and you can come here. You specify the endpoint name. So you can give it any name you want. You can specify the instance type. So you can select any instance type you want and you can say deploy model. And that's it. Now you have deployed, essentially you have built a model, you trained it, you optimized it, and you deployed as well without essentially knowing anything in between. Just all what you need is to essentially go here, upload the data, and that's all what you need. Upload the data to S3, and that's it. Which is again, pretty incredible. I would say it's a, it's a, it's a really powerful, uh, I would say, feature within AWS SageMaker. And that's why I wanted to make sure I include this feature in the um, modern AI course, because again, this is like, this is, this is amazing. You can, like, you know, AI is, is, uh, is uh, essentially right now is at the fingertips of anyone, even without, with minimum coding expertise. And uh, in addition to that as well, and that's a very important point, a lot of companies uh, essentially look, they don't like black box models. Like I, basically before we, apply, before we apply or implement any model in practice, I actually wanna know what was the model used? How has it been trained? You know, what is the performance of the model? I wanna know everything. And that's why we hate the black box idea. And that's where, again, SageMaker came into play and they can provide you with these, these two things, which are really powerful. These, this is the open candidate generation notebook and we have the data exploration notebook. So if you open the generated notebook, if you click on it, 
Here we go. Here, essentially, think of it as kind of a report that is telling you what happened, okay? So if you, if you guys scroll down here, you will find that here I have candidate pipelines, for example. So the model, there are a series of models that have been trained. One of them, for example, is XGBoost. And here is the, st the steps that they have done. So for example, they, they apply the robust imputer, for example. And then they apply PCA or principal component analysis to just perform dimensionality reduction. And then they have done robust standard scalar, which is they scale the data and so on. And then they train an XGBoost algorithm. And then we have another candidate. They tried linear learner algorithm. So instead of ru running the XGBoost, they tried linear learner. Okay, so they tried to run that again with ton tons of other uh, as well algorithms beforehand. Another candidate model they have done here is they did again the um, robust imputer. They have done XGBoost and they have done threshold one hot encoder, one of the feature engineering, for example. And again, tons and tons of model. And again, I highly recommend that you guys, there are tons of information in here, but that's the idea, is that it's not black box anymore. It's actually even like, not even gray, it's actually white box, because you know exactly what happened in the background, but the most powerful thing here is that you actually didn't do the work. It's an autopilot. It's like, you know, like a pilot of a plane. He's just sitting right there and the actual controller is taking care of everything for you, but you understand what happened and you make sure that actually that the, um, the data makes sense and the model predictions make sense as well. If you check out, if you go back here, you can open the open data exploration notebook and this is the data exploration. Here is telling you basically that here we have 30,000 samples, for example, 30,000 rows. We have 25 columns that have been detected and we're doing binary classification problem, which is essentially what we know. Here they printed out the data for us and they have done as well the um, analysis for the data. So they say uh, for if, they missed, uh, if they filled out any missing elements, they include all the information, what did they do in here and so on. And if you scroll down, here the number of unique entries for every single category. So for example, education, if you guys remember, we had seven. For marriage, we had four. Sex, we had two and so on. Think of this as kind of, you know, the exploratory data analysis process that we have done before in our original notebook. If you guys recall, if you check out the original notebook in here, we have been able to do this. Like, you know, we checked out the data. We checked out how many null elements are there or not. Well, you don't need to worry about any of that. Just ignore exactly what I have been doing, you know, in the last 10, 10 uh, lectures and just go ahead and use AutoML or Autopilot. It's really powerful and that's it. That's essentially how you use or leverage um, Autopilot to build, train, tune and deploy any AI or ML model in practice. Okay, and that's guys, the state of the art, I would say is technique that you guys could leverage. And that's all what I have for this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in future projects.